steel, skyscrapers, ships, roads, railways, the beer in your glass, medicine, painkillers, dyes, perfumes, film, and some of the first plastics. In this video, I'm making Coke, not that kind of Coke. Instead, we are focusing on turning this rock into this rock. Perhaps not the most visually amazing feat, but this process opened the door to the modern world. Inside coal contains a huge swath of chemicals with countless uses. But when it was first figured out what you could make from it, they started to use it everywhere, including as dyes in our food. Some synthetic compounds are completely harmless, but others have been found to cause serious health risks and have been phased out. If you want to avoid all artificial colors, consider checking out the sponsor of today's video, Magic Spoon, who only uses natural colorants. I love cereal, and as a kid, I used to eat it every day, and if we ever ran out in the morning, I, it would just ruin my day. But as an adult, I rarely eat it, just because it's packed full of all things you usually want to avoid. Tons of carbs and sugar. But for a tasty way to reintroduce cereal into your life as an adult, you can try Magic Spoon. Magic Spoon is made without grains and has less carbs with no sugar and high in protein. Magic Spoon is cereal reinvented with nothing artificial. A variety pack comes in four delicious flavors, fruity, frosted, cocoa, and peanut butter. High protein, keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, soy free, wheat free, and naturally flavored. Click the link below to get your variety pack and try it today. Use my code HTME or click the link in the description to try Magic Spoon cereal today and get $5 off. You can also find Magic Spoons on Amazon or your nearest grocery store. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed by a 100% happiness guarantee online. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money. No questions asked. Click the link in the description or go to magicspoon.com slash HTME or scan the QR code on the screen for $5 off. The history of humanity can easily be reduced to us learning how to make things hot. Since early mastery of making fire, we've been trying to get our fires hotter and hotter, opening the door to allow us to make ceramics, glass, bronze, and iron. Using all of the techniques we could find, like adding additional oxygen flow and concentrating wood fuel by turning it into charcoal. But even that maxes out at around 2300 degrees Fahrenheit. But the commodity we're making today can easily double that. Coal is a natural mineral formed from ancient plant matter that was buried in swamps hundreds of millions of years ago and compressed under heat and pressure over time. It's essentially fossilized plant material that stores the energy from the sun. Coal has been used since ancient Roman and ancient Chinese times, but its use was rather limited until the Industrial Revolution, when its use as a highly concentrated energy source was truly utilized. The concept of coke is very similar to the concept of charcoal, something humanity has been making for millennia. Charcoal is made by burning wood in an oxygen-deprived environment, allowing everything but the carbon to be burned away, leaving just the energy-dense fuel, burning off around 75% of the organic matter. The concept is very similar to coal, except it's even denser. Coal starts out at around the same carbon content as charcoal, but much denser. But by burning it in a similar oxygen devoid environment, the remaining impurities and volatiles can be burned off, leaving a nearly pure form of carbon fuel. A big challenge with using coal is that all the impurities when they burn off can form together and block airflow. In a coal forge, these are called clinkers and need to be manually cleared. With the pure coke, everything burns off and airflow goes unimpeded. Another benefit is that where coal produces a lot of soot and smelly off-gassing from the burning off of all the impurities, coke already has those removed and so burns relatively clean. As I previously covered in my video earlier this year on the history of the world and four beers, this was discovered to be an amazing advantage for controlling the roasting of malt. Coke offered a highly controllable heat source that produced no smoky or sooty taste, allowing finely tuned roasting to be perfected and allowing the invention of the pale ale. These extracted impurities though have their own fascinating uses. Pretty soon we are going to be continuing our exploration on the evolution of artificial lighting. Something that remained basically stagnant after the invention of a lamp and candle, but soon we'll be able to start making the next step to reaching the light bulb. The next big invention for us being gas lighting.
Today, many people use a commodity called natural gas, which then suggests there must be a different option of unnatural gas. This is actually coal gas. As industrial coke plants were built, it was discovered the gases produced in the process could be burned off as a fuel source. This resulted in massive storage tanks of the output of gas being built and stored in towns, earning the name Town Gas, providing gas to residents for light, cooking, and heating. Starting the 1940s, methods of extracting natural deposits of methane were discovered and started to provide a cheaper source of fuel gas, contrasting with the artificially produced gases like coal gas by being a natural gas, eventually taking over most of the market in many parts of the world. Capturing these gases is not limited to just coal. Similarly with wood, you can capture the gases produced in what is called wood gas, which can even be used to power an internal combustion engine in cars and was done when petroleum was scarce during World War II. Beyond just the gas, other impurities are emitted called coal tar. I made a crude setup to try and capture some of these emissions. The result is a very nasty, sticky mess. It's very reminiscent of the crude petroleum I collected in California, which it has a lot of overlap with. This black mess is a mixture of over 10,000 chemicals capable of being separated and used for a surprising amount of different things. Ironically, many uses in medicine and many are known carcinogens. Just straight coal tar is considered an essential medicine by the World Health Organization as a skin treatment. Several painkillers can be derived from the components in the tar, including Tylenol. And then some of the first roads were paved using coal tar until petroleum eventually replaced it. And there's enough overlap in the chemicals that petroleum ended up taking over a lot of coal tar, especially as petroleum grew as a primary fuel source. It ended up taking a bunch of batches to process all the coal we needed to turn to coke. I split it with Elliot to run batches in his own barrel. What he didn't expect is how much energy it takes to fully bake the coal. It took a full day of burning with lots and lots of woods to process just a small batch. It takes a really high, consistent heat, and the coal is just that dense that it takes a lot longer than you expect if you're used to just making charcoal. After several weeks of doing it batch by batch, we finally had a decent yield for our purposes. You can tell it's become coke because it forms a much lighter, spongy rock, often with a grayish hue. So coal tar ended up being a really large motivator for opening the door for a lot of new chemicals. It also was the first source for chemicals for making plastic with Bakelite. But as society has switched to using petroleum largely for our fuel sources, for a lot of things, that has become the primary source and a little bit cheaper. But for all of these purposes and potential uses of it, the most important for me is gonna be the coke. And for that, we're gonna be using this coming up to make our own cast iron. And cast iron has kind of been a really crucial ingredient for getting us to the steam engine because it is very important for making metal precision things like our lathe right now is made out of wood which will kind of slowly grind itself away and not be as precise so really actual precise machining was not mastered until they were able to start casting the pieces affordably in cast iron and for that being able to cast our own iron it's going to require coke we made an attempt at this a few years ago in utah using the draft kiln that had been built to see if we could reach temperatures just hot enough to melt iron. In theory, it is possible, but right at the limitations of charcoal. And ultimately, it did not work out. We were able to use a propane forge with Nate from the internet and actually use that to melt iron and cast it. But even then, it was just barely reaching that temperature. Coke is gonna open the door. So we've been working on processing a bunch of coal into coke. And now that we have our fuel source, hopefully now we can start casting our iron. So look for that in the upcoming video. We have a few other things we are working on to get that ready. One of them is trying to get a large bellows 
that we can power by water wheel. Try to bring it all together. So hopefully, thanks to this mineral, we'll be able to unlock this next technology and move forward on our tech tree. Thank you again to all my supporters on Patreon. Without you, this wouldn't be possible. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.